This is Al, AI0Q. That's my amateur radio call. And I'm home here in my uh, computer and radio shack. And uh, I live in the small town of Glendon, Minnesota, which is about 10 miles east of Fargo, North Dakota. So I'm way up here in the, uh, the upper Midwest. And you may be able to see uh, back over here uh, somewhere my uh, HF ham radio. It's currently tuned to 20 meters. I just heard some CW on there, but that seems to have faded away. Uh, maybe it'll be back. And also on the computer screens I have uh, Winter Trucker, a well-known YouTuber, and he's currently uh, paddling up in the boreal forest in northern Ontario somewhere. Uh, today I'm going to show a couple of uh, bike rides I did, or at least snippets from them. A few things I saw, and my bike rides were on the state trail system in Minnesota. Uh, one was on the Paul Bunyan Trail near Walker, and the other on the Central Lakes Trail near Fergus Falls. And uh, they're both kind of similar, I guess. The, uh, the trails are asphalt paths laid on the beds of old railroad lines, so there's not much up and down climbing. But it's great uh, scenery, and uh, sometimes you see a few animals, critters, come out of the woods. And so uh, if you have good weather, it's a good time, uh, a good easy bike ride. And also I have uh, a few photographs of the uh, Ham Radio Field Day event, which was last week. And I went out and set up a station in a field near Eulen, Minnesota. And uh, I had one radio, the one you see over my shoulder here, and uh, a generator, a gas power generator, and I threw up a couple of antennas and proceeded to make contacts all over North America. I think I had oh, 140 uh, Morse code contacts. I didn't get around to firing up the microphone. So anyway, that's uh, hopefully what I'll uh, be able to put into this video. First up is the Paul Bunyan Trail near Walker. And as I said, these trails are laid out on old railroad beds, but the Paul Bunyan has an eight and a half mile segment that is not on the railroad. And you go up and down over some short, uh, sharp hills. And you know, it's not mountains and it's not really, really tough grades, but uh, they did figure that people should be warned. So first I'll show a picture of the sign they posted saying, you better beware. And then a couple of scenes of the trail and it's impossible to show on a camera how steep things are. The segments I showed were really somewhat steep and you had to get into a good gear to get up them. But uh, it won't look like anything but a normal trail. And then after that, I came across a spotted fawn beside the trail. Actually, I saw the doe and the fawn ahead on the trail. And they stood there looking at me as I rode up. And the doe finally leaped off into the forest. But I didn't see the, uh, the fawn go anywhere. So when I got up, I looked, and there beside the trail was the fawn just frozen down in the grass, hoping to avoid detection, I suppose. And I'm sure the doe was off looking at me to see what I was going to do. Well, I did nothing to the fawn except photograph it.
Hello there, little gear. Oh, I forgot one thing. Uh, quite often in the forest in Minnesota, trees fall down. And of course, I have a picture of today's tree that fell down. I could almost ride underneath this one, but I didn't quite dare. I'd probably bonk my head on the uh, bottom of the tree, and, and that would be it for me. Next is the Central Lakes Trail out of Fergus Falls. And the first thing that you see on that trail is a lake, and uh, it's a fairly big lake, I guess. But if you can see in the first photo, the shoreline is made up entirely of the railroad bank where they laid the tracks. I suspect that these days they would not get away with doing that. There'd have to be an environmental impact statement and somebody would make the railroad reroute their track somewhere else. But down the Central Lakes Trail there is several instances of where the track was just blown straight across a, a small lake dividing it in two. So uh, it's just the way it is. Um, it, Sometimes it's hard to see because uh, the trees have grown up on either side of the track and you don't really see how the banks went. You have to kind of look for it. Well, also right out of Fergus Falls, uh, we have the highest mountain, apparently. Uh, there's a picture with the, uh, tra uh, the trail going straight and true ahead, but in the bushes ahead, Beyond the little sign you can see, there is a sign that says Continental Divide. So we must be up on a mountain, I guess. <clears throat> I think uh, this is actually a subcontinental divide. And one way goes to Hudson's Bay, goes up the Red River of the north to Winnipeg, and then on up through Lake Winnipeg, and, and on through the, what is it, the James River? the one that Eric Severide uh, canoed up, or uh, I forget which one he actually went on, but uh, up in that country. And the other uh, drainage would be off to the Mississippi River, uh, which of course would drain south through uh, the middle of North America. So anyway, uh, <clears throat> we are up on the, the high heights here, ha ha. <laughs> It's fun to see these things. And after that, uh, I didn't, well, I took a couple of uh, film clips, and one was actually on a raised causeway. You can't see it in the film, but on either side, the uh, original landscape is down probably 15 to 20 feet from the level of the roadbed on either side. And at the end of it, if you watch the, uh, uh, the sides of the trail, you'll see some railings. And that is because at that point, the uh, track is going over a stone arch bridge. And if you fell off <clears throat> either side of the trail right there, you'd be like jumping off a two-story building. And it's quite high. And again, the trees block everything. So uh, it, it's really tough to tell. I'm sure a lot of bike riders do not know that they're even on a raised causeway, especially, or a uh, stone bridge.
And after those uh, uh, scenes, I have what I call the uh, good cop, bad cop scenario. Uh, the first one is a what we call a mud turtle. And it was just sitting there on the side of the trail, blinking and hardly moving. And the second was a critter that I'd rather not encounter. Uh, you can see that it's got some pretty nasty claws and uh, it might uh, decide to snap out and uh, take a chunk of you. And now I come to the uh, ham radio part, the field day station I set up. And all I have is some still pictures of that. I'll try and put some text up on the, uh, the photographs to kind of identify what they are. Uh, not much interest to anybody except ham radio operators, perhaps. But it's really fun to play with this stuff. And to think that you can sit in your car, or my Jeep, I guess, in uh, Nowheresville, Minnesota and be uh, talking by Morse code to people from coast to coast in the United States is uh, kind of interesting, I think. Uh, I know you can do it on your cell phone, but uh, you're using a whole infrastructure. With the radio stations, it's station to station and you either hear them or you don't. And the antennas that you build and the, and the radio you have determines whether you will be successful or not. So I'll show those pictures and uh, that will be the end of the video.